In this video, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella discusses the new $500 billion Stargate project, a collaborative initiative with OpenAI, SoftBank, and Oracle focused on developing AI infrastructure in the US. He highlights the strengthening partnership with OpenAI, reaffirming that Microsoft's Azure Cloud Platform will remain the exclusive provider for OpenAI APIs, while also addressing concerns about competitiveness and collaboration stability. He underscores Microsoft's commitment to investing heavily in Azure to drive AI development, while also acknowledging the significance of software and algorithmic innovations in maximizing the potential of AI systems beyond just computational power. Uh, going forward, even so nothing changes there. Uh, IP access to Microsoft continues, and in fact, because of this, there will be more IP, and so therefore we will benefit, and we have rev share arrangements that are great, and also, OpenAI committed um, in, to a, in a very significant way to Azure consumption. And so right. we're very thrilled about that as well. So all up, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this accelerates OpenAI's model work, which accelerates Microsoft's ability right. to go to market with those models and uh, really uh, grow our business. Let me ask you this. Uh, we had your, one of your competitors on earlier this morning, Mark Benioff, uh, who has been very critical of, uh, of this partnership and one of the things that he said was, he said, this is a demonstration of a fissure uh, between uh, the two companies that you are going to go off longer term and build your own frontier models. Um, and that there's a disconnect or of some sort between Sam Altman and Mustafa, who you hired for, uh, to run your AI program. Can you speak to that? I mean, look, I, 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 I think uh, the partnership with uh, OpenAI to us is a critical partnership. We love it. It's working. It's created a lot of value for right. us. Uh, and we plan to just continue forward with it. It's true that uh, on Azure today, there are other models. Uh, there are open source right. models. We have our own small language models and we'll continue to have all of that because customers at the end of the day are going to demand choice right. there and that's fine and we'll make sure we support it. But having a leading model on Azure exclusively is a great advantage to us and it's good. Let me ask you this. So I talked to Sam Altman at DealBook just about a month and a half ago now and he says, I don't think we're disentangling to your, to your point. He says, look, I will not pretend there are no misalignments or challenges. Obviously, there are some. On the whole, he said that he thinks it's tremendously positive. What are the things where there's not alignment? One of the things I noticed in one of your filings recently is you actually put OpenAI uh, as a competitor uh, on your list, which I thought must speak about your ambitions long term. Yeah, I mean, more importantly, I think uh, for us, one of the things that, in fact, Stargate is the answer. You know, Sam wants to continue with the scaling laws to build out more compute right. in order for him to train more models. And uh, we have a rofer, so he comes to us first. If right. we meet those needs, then we clear it. If not, he can go to these other providers. And so therefore, I think it works out well for Sam and for us. So this was an adjustment, quite frankly, that we made uh, in order to support both his needs, while at the same time keeping uh, the integrity of what we wanted right. as the strategic value. You're investing, you're investing $80 billion already. Um, how much money do you ultimately put into to this? You know, so, so this is where, you know, Microsoft is investing $80 billion in capital each okay. year. And this year we are investing. And I, I'm not particularly in the details of what they're investing. Okay. And so, but when you look at that $100 billion commitment, $500 billion potential, I don't know if you saw Elon Musk took to Twitter um, and said, they don't have the money. The money doesn't exist as if this is not really going to happen. What do you think of that? Look, all I know is I'm good for my 80 billion. I am right. going to spend 80 billion dollars building out Azure. Customers can count on Microsoft with OpenAI models being there everywhere in the world, uh, serving OpenAI models and other models. That's, I think, what I know. One of the other discussions here in Davos and even before Davos has been this question of whether there's a wall, um, whether the, the mm. scaling laws will continue apace and Sam Allman has been out there saying that they will continue apace. Uh, Sundar Pichai has been suggesting that actually it gets a little bit more complicated sooner than we may imagine. Where do you land on that? I mean, I, I think um, both are true, actually, because the reality is I don't think there's a wall. Things do get harder with right. scale. Uh, and interestingly enough, pre-training scale with, you know, as the scale goes up, gets harder. But then uh, what Sam and team have shown, even with 01 and now 03, is this inference time compute right. um, and the ability to really have inference scaling 
compound in some sense uh, the effects of scaling laws. So what used to be a six-month doubling, maybe a three-month doubling. So I would say scaling laws are very much alive. Uh, and the question now is, in fact, if anything, how do you take advantage of all this capability building to deploy real AI systems? Where are you on your own frontier models? Obviously, you did hire Mustafa. You have your own efforts uh, that are underway. What does that look like? When will we see that? And, and what do you think that ultimately does to, I mean, you've done remarkably with OpenAI, and, and that may turn out to be a spectacular investment unto itself, but how you think this whole landscape shifts at some point? I mean, I think, just to be very, very clear, we have access to OpenAI IP, so we're not right. going to do things twice. Uh, so we are very, very happy with the access we have uh, to OpenAI. It's just that we do have other models that we have built. We built the public model that we right. talk about is Phi, which is an SLM. Uh, a small language model, uh, Phi4, it's best in class for its parameter size. Uh, and we have other models too. But right. more, to me, the more important thing for me is to build value on top of OpenAI. So we have a fantastic post-training stack. We have done even a bunch of mid-training in different languages. So that's where our focus is. When you think about the scaling laws, how much of all of this is simply about processing power? If you can buy enough NVIDIA chips today that you too, can create a spectacular large language model. I look at what Elon Musk has done in the last 12 months, which is just remarkable. Uh, built out a, 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 you know, a, a whole stack. He, he got a lot of NVIDIA chips and, and he's done it. How much of it is about the processing power versus the algorithm? I mean, look, it's all of it, but compute is intelligence. Uh, but on top of compute, uh, you need the algorithmic breakthroughs too. I mean, so to some degree, if you look at even why the scaling laws are working, is because we are getting good at being right. both using algorithmic changes uh, as well as data and data usage uh, and compute efficiency. Right. And that's where the capability is. So when we say scaling laws, it's just not compute. In fact, it is faster than uh, compute growth. So right. if the compute has gone 10x, the capability is 100x. Why is that? It's software.